Right, guys. Cliff here. Now, uh, continuing the Bird of Time PowerPod conversion, I've got um, I've got to replace the two servos in the front, which are old anyway, with um, these two small, much smaller servos. Um, they're Metal Gear servos. That's all that matters. And first job is to move these old Futabas, and uh, we'll see how we get on. So. I'll just bend you down a little bit. The reason I'm doing this because I haven't really got room in in the uh, front for a 3S2200. So first off, out with the servos. All right, what I've got to do is to reduce the length of this push rod to the same length as this push rod. Really. Right, so what I've done, um, I've just shortened this uh, push rod to approximately the same length as the rudder. Now I need to select the correct size horn. Where's my servo gone? Select the correct size horn for the servo. Right. Now they're going to go side by side like that in the fuselage. Down inside there. There should be plenty of room for the horns now. I've settled on the bearer. I've glued the bearers in. So I'm just going to uh, just drill a couple of small holes, one each end for the servo. I'll hook up the a receiver and we'll see how she works so back in a minute rudder servo I could get a little bit more throw if I wanted to but on the tail end but I don't think I need to an elevator of course is offline it's not connected but they're both missing the side with a hair's breadth but at least it's a much neater installation now with two mini servers and two honking great. So I've saved that much space. So now, loads of space for the battery. I've just mounted the pylon pod, power pod, on the uh, bars. And it's quite solid, actually. I think it'll do OK. I'm just offering up. So I've, I've routed the uh, receiver, put the servos in, as you saw and rounded the cables all the way up the back, past the flap servo, into the back compartment with a couple of extension leads and the receivers sitting in there. So there it is, taking shape. <laughs> so I've extended the lead on the ESC to come as far forward as the battery, and that will go down through a little uh, cutout in the hatch, so that will allow it to fit on and disappear down through the camera slot hole. Obviously I can't put the camera there with a the folding prop. The, ES, the ESC I velcro to the inside of the pod here. I'll pop the receiver in the back with a bit of foam on it and then this hatch which is the original hatch unchanged slides down under the wires and I'll just clip in the back and that little power lead will just tuck in there no problem at all like that so we've got quite a neat installation I'm going to put a cable tie around just to hold these cables into place. Uh, tighten up the motor screws. Put a bit of foam around the battery area. And pop the prop on and she's ready to go. Ready to trial. Quite pleased with that. As I normally say. It's a beast. The beast power pod it doesn't look so bad when the wings are on so i've got about 
one and a half, two degrees perhaps of up thrust on the motor. As I'm told, that's what they need. Power lead looks a bit untidy there, but perhaps I should have put a black one on it, two black ones. That disappeared down. Let's put it on, show you. There we go. So the ESC is out in the in the breeze, the motor's out in the breeze. So I think it should stay pretty calm, cool rather. From the edge though, on the side, looks okay. <laughs> Great stuff. For me, this is what it's all about, really. Playing about with things. Yes, yeah, quite solid. Quite solid. Anyway, see you in the next one. Hi right, guys, I'm going to run up. I'm going to run up the motor and we'll see how it performs. That is to say, if it can pull itself through grass. Okay, first test run. Okay, I'm happy with that. So next time we see this, it should be just about to hand launch it into the ether. Stay tuned.